were to say that I missed you guys and I missed doing videos in this rattly little car, yeah, that, that'd be kind of inadequate. It's been a hot minute. I'm sorry. You know, life gets away from you, jobs change, but I always said I'd be back. I hope no one doubted me. I mean, as of right this minute, I'm recording, not editing. And editing has always been the real difficult part, so I'm saying right now, hey, I'm back. Let's hope this actually makes it onto YouTube. <laughs> How have you guys been? It's been a wild ride. A lot has changed. A lot has changed. Prices on these stupid little MR2s, I bought this for 70, I think it was 7,500 flat in uh, right around, I guess, mid-2020, about this time last year, actually. I'm seeing prices with higher mileage than this going for like 10, 12, and 14,000 dollars. So we're right smack in the middle of the next great tuner car inflation. So that's kind of cool. I think to the average buyer, they would probably say I have this thing kind of ratted out right now, mostly due to the lack of carpet, which I kind of wanted, but I also didn't want. I was always of the opinion that this car, it's light enough, you don't need to go doing stuff like that. I've owned plenty of cars where I actually took the carpet out, meant to, and wanted to. This, this didn't really feel like one of them. That's okay, that's okay. Um, I actually got under there, as we've discussed uh, previously, to repair some rust holes, and that having been accomplished, I kind of want to repaint it, uh, and then my actual goal long-term is to put back in some fresh carpet. I still have the carpet I took out, but man, it's rough. The hardest part for me is that the way I drive and the size of my shoe, I tear through just about anything that's under my clutch foot. As I look right now, I have nice, shiny, polished steel with no paint, no primer, no nothing on it, bare metal looking like it's polished to a high uh, gloss under my left foot because that's just what I've rubbed through clutching in and out. So that was obviously a problem with my carpets, that was obviously a problem with any format I would use, so we've got to find a more long-term solution for that. But I do want fresher, nicer carpet in this eventually. The real story right now is dialing in these mods. So, we did the mods. We did lots of mods. The car feels good. I forget what it felt like stock. That's kind of a problem because this is now standard and it's just, I mean, I know this is incredibly good handling. I know this is quick response, but it just feels normal. And honestly, I want to tighten the sway bars. That's what I was planning on doing today until the good folks up at uh, the Toge group told me that there's a caffeine and gasoline going on, so I decided we'd go there instead. Um, but dialing in those mods, what have we got? White line sway bars, uh, adjustable. I think the rears have three holes and the front have two. I'm wanting to crank those out to the tightest they can be. Uh, of course, we got new sway bar end links from Monkey Wrench when we ordered those. Uh, those need some work of their own. We've got Racing DS Delta Sanctuary coilovers, which are a step up from the BRs. Um, they, they've been really good. I'm just, I'm very pleased with them. We have the Cusco um, floor plate. It's a breastplate that sits under the car, right square in the middle, tightens up the middle. We decided to go ahead and keep the Cusco door bars. I think on the day we installed those, I said, man, I don't know. These kind of piss me off. Am I going to like these? I got used to them. I love them. They are cool. Uh, I get in and out of my wife's Miata now or any other uh, little roadster and I'm just kind of appalled by the ease with which I can do it. I'm like, that's not how a roadster's supposed to be. So yeah, you get used to them and climbing over them, that little sore spot it was creating on my hip has now just become titan steel. Powerful. I could kick Chuck Norris over that building right there, that one, because of the strength my leg from climbing over a door bar. Yeah, so, no, it's, it's a good mod. I'm happy with it. Um, yeah, let's see what else. We still have the RPF1 sitting in storage in the storage room, and that's because all the stupid political funny money that cranked uh, 
uh, inflation out to the highest we've seen since 2008. That kind of just ran out. They stopped giving out money. So uh, we're going to have to wait a little bit on those tires. But once we have those, that ought to sweeten the pot. Uh, so we do have those. What else am I missing? There we go. So in the MR2 Spider Group on Facebook, there is a company that formed out of there called uh, Stay Swifty. Cool. Uh, nice name for a company that isn't in any way, shape, or form associated with Rick and Morty. Cool. Uh, but yeah, they got in touch with this guy by the name of Nick out of Greece who makes this really awesome short ram intake. Now I know short ram intakes are kind of stupid, except that this one points behind the battery and goes straight towards the driver's side intake vent on the side of the car, meaning it gets direct flow from the vent. Additionally, it has a velocity stack on it with a six inch diameter at its biggest, which is kind of ridiculous and made installation kind of a pain in the butt. But they did say that this was engineered over several years um, and has actually shown an increase of five wheel horsepower and similar torque on a dyno. Okay, well, A, I have always believed in the intake, header, exhaust, and tune combination. A good IHET is just one step in optimizing a vehicle. So of course I had to get an intake of some sort. Whether it actually ever adds power or not, that's, you know, that's another question. I just, I'm old school enough that I remember the days when we thoroughly believed in them and nobody had to bump them. So it's kind of just part of what I do. That's all I'm going to say about that. That having been said, you know, 1999 Honda Boy Alert here, my butt dyno does feel the increase. So, I don't know how accurate that is, but I believe it's a great product. I ordered mine directly from Nick before he contracted his design out to Stay Swifty. Uh, I think that's a good deal. You know, both Nick and the guys at Stay Swifty are both very, very, very helpful. If you're an MR2 owner and you're not on the MR2 Spider Facebook group, I highly recommend correcting for that. Uh, it's a really, really good group of guys. Uh, Aaron from Stay Swifty and Nick, the original designer from whom I purchased mine. Excellent guys, super helpful. Um, yeah, that intake, it's pretty great. So, yeah, that's where we're at. We did the original header that we talked about. We replaced the exhaust because it was rusting through. We did polyurethane motor mounts. We did a Cusco uh, press plate. We did BC Racing DS Series coilovers. We did Cusco um, door bars. We did an Exidy Stage 2 clutch with a Finanza lightweight flywheel. And we did this intake. And we have RPF1 sitting in the storage room. What does it amount to? I don't remember what it's like to drive a heavy vehicle, and every time I do, it just feels wrong in my bones. Uh, I think my coilovers set up something pretty aggressive, like 17, 17 out of 30 clicks in the front, and 15 out of 30 in the rear, and just that level of stiffness and ride, totally normal. It wasn't always that way. Um, yeah, it's a good car. I can't get around just how responsive and willing it is to do the things I ask it to do. And just without causing me any real issues. I mean, there have been some times, I think I told you about when I first uh, started the channel, we talked about how I was just coming off of a situation with this car where I had a pretty ugly misfire. And what I think that was, that was a um, that was a fuel injector issue. I think I ran some uh, cleaner through it, and I think it sorted it out pretty good. Uh, the next thing I really want on this car, badly, it needs stainless steel brake lines, and it needs some good brake fluid. I am running the dirt cheapest brakes you can get. I did replace them, and it's literally with O'Reilly, whatever brands they carry, OEM replacement. So. Obviously nothing special, not even very good, and I don't know. I just feel for a car this light, and with handling and prowess everywhere else, I don't feel 
feel like there should be something we're missing. Uh, Nitto Neogens, 
Uh, nothing crazy. They just, they work. They work good. Same size, uh, 15, uh, 205s, I think it's like 45 side wall, and they work really good on her car. And they gave her enough grip to realize, holy cow, this car is very, very floaty. I hate this. So her birthday came up, we got her some sway bars. We took her out to Toge the very, that very weekend, and she went and put herself right smack dab in the probably the bottom uh, 90 percentile of Alpha Group, which was incredibly impressive because now that means we have somebody who started from nothing, got really freaking fast, and can now teach our newer folks how to also likewise be fast. Uh, I need better tires. This feels good though. There we go. Lots of room. Everybody's happy. But yeah, she went out there and just blew my mind. She pushed it for the first time. She learned what it means to grab a corner and push the tires abilities and just it was beautiful to watch. You know that scene in initial D when you see him come around the corner sideways like bah, like that just you see that you only see the road you don't see before the corner you just see him slide out to here and then they come towards you. That's exactly what she did and she left some of our newer guys behind. This is a woman who this is her first and only manual car. This is her first ever sports car and she started learning to drive a manual sports car in 2019. She has literally no at it and now she's earned the name Mama Toge. She takes care of people, she sets up events, and she's helping a lot of the newer, younger members feel good about getting up to speed in this hobby that they've been invited to. This is this group has been the best thing I've done in my life. I don't have any kids. My wife, who I married, is part of this group, so she's included in that. Let's see if I can get away with that. Try that one, guys. This group has been the best thing I've done with my life. There are so many people affected positively by what we're doing. I can't, I haven't been able to take the credit for it since day one. All I did is I put people into a Facebook group and said, hey, let's go do this together. And then I just told people, look, there are no leaders. I am not your leader. If you go somewhere you want to go, please lead us. Tell us about it. But that's what we're here to do. And it worked. It worked. I'd like to take a minute and revisit the name of the channel. Just because I'm here sitting thinking about it. You know, Inspired Drive, what the idea behind that was, was that we are a select group of people, myself and you lovely subscribers, you. Thank you, by the way. Seriously. We're a specific kind of people where we find peace, satisfaction, place of belonging in the drive, in the taking of the steering wheel, in the shifting of the gear shift, in the cornering, in the experience of driving. You know, to some people this activity is a necessary evil, it's a huge inconvenience, and to some people it's something they're not even conscious while they're doing it, as far as I can tell. But to us, it's meaningful. It's art. It's We're inspired by the experience of driving and we like using the correct tools to get the most out of that experience. We love the competitive nature of driving. And this is different than a racing channel, right? Because there's so many racing channels out there. Don't get me wrong, my group and I, we're racing, but it's not like that. It's different. This is about a love of the experience of driving, which is why we may not have the most expensive, bad, badass looking equipment on our cars that's good for car shows, that's good for Instagram fame. What we have are tools that we love. Things that put a smile on our face and pull us out of our dark places. We have built tools that help us in that goal of enjoying our lives. Experience home 
make it reliable, make it better. You know, I didn't realize when I started this channel that the real experience with this inspired drive thing that I was putting together was so much more about the community. Hey, a Viper. I bet he's going to Cars and Coffee too. We didn't know that it was going to be as much about the community as it has become, but it has. Um, I think that's really the answer here, is the community, is the driving with people. There is a lot of therapy and a lot of time spent solitarily on the road. There's a lot of good time and opportunities for that. But it turns out that the real love of this, at least for me, and I hope you're like me, is that we want to be together with people. We want to share this with people. We want to love on people. And we want to build something that helps others feel good. That's the Inspired Drive Challenge. As I speak, there are 422 of you, my lovely subscribers. Thank you. My job, my mission statement for each one of you is to find a person. If you can, find some people, but at least find a person and give them something to be excited about. Share with them the thing you love. If you're like me, that's going to be cars and driving. If it's something else, then it's something else. But the mission statement is to love on other people through what you do. That's what we do here. That's what it's about. Guys, it's a pleasure as always. I'll catch up with you next time. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It helps us out a lot. If you like this video, you can go ahead and click the thumbs up button on it. Um, if you think someone else would benefit from it, I bet you know what to do there too. You can share it. Uh, if you want to get with me personally, I am on uh, Instagram at inspired underscore drive. And if you comment on this video, I will pretty, I, I don't, I think I've got a pretty flawless record. I respond to everything. And honestly, at 420 subscribers, I don't think any content creator has much of an excuse not to. It's like, hey man, I'm grateful you subscribed to me. Cool, then why didn't you respond to my comment? It's like, there's only five of us. Oh, I guess I was busy. No, there's no excuse. You know, you want to build a community, build a community. A relationship is a two-way street, and I want that for us. The same way as we've done in this group, the same way I'm recommending you do in the groups that you build. So, guys, again, thank you. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.